Okay, we have five minutes delay. I'm not happy because Swiss timing is Swiss timing. That means if I say 18 minutes, it's 18 minutes, please. Yeah? Okay, so we have to work on that for the rest of the day. So I'm happy to announce the next speaker, Andre from the St. Petersburg Electronic University, and he will talk about uh, his special tool. And I have to admit, when I did the first search on Google, I found another Andre with the same name, and he was doing very nice pictures. So I think it was the wrong one, so I'm pretty happy that we have now the real Andre here talking about things related to our topic of semantics. Please, Andre. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. That's my name is... My name is Andrew Zamoski, and I'm presenting our my name is Mikhail Petelev's work related to using ontologies for validation of web applications using Epifront tool we're developing. Uh, I've been speaking on this conference last year and I was talking about uh, using the same tool for validating of object-oriented programs and this year we're changing gears a little bit and uh, now we're talking about use, using ontologies in uh, an area that is uh, at first glance uh, not directly related to semantic web, uh, to web application security. Okay, so web application security is a popular theme these days and uh, mainly because any synthesized company uh, now, uh, now it's post parts of its business through web using some applications like e-commerce, banking, uh, content management uh, sites and so on. And turns out this is also good news for cybercrime uh, because all the reports including for instance the IBM x report that uh, came out just this month uh, confirm the growth of, uh, of amount of hacking attacks on these applications. And mostly the hackers uh, reach their goals through uh, various vulnerabilities in web applications, such as injections like SQL injections, and XML, app, comment injections, and so on. Uh, Cross-site scripting, and cross-site cross request forgery are also extremely popular. But there are also a lot of other types of attacks like file inclusion, denial of service, and so, so on. Uh, this slide, I've just, uh, to show the importance of the problem, I just listed just some of you of the companies, world, uh, worldwide companies that were hacked uh, this or last year. Uh, those include so well known ones like uh, LinkedIn, Yahoo, Citigroup, and so on. And uh, in fact, the impacts for their business are extremely, uh, extremely high. For instance, uh, Sony had uh, their uh, Sony PlayStation network hacked, and uh, all the credit card numbers uh, were stolen. So Sony reported losses of billions of dollars. Uh, we cannot uh, be perfectly sure that it's uh, perfectly secure, uh, but uh, we can try to validate our web applications uh, to see if they se seem, to be, uh, seem to be secure. And there are mainly two uh, widely used techniques for, uh, for, uh, for doing that security validation. It is static analysis security testing and dynamic analysis security testing. Uh, static analysis operates on application source code. Uh, other examples of tools are HP Fortify, Converted, and Veracode. There are others. And dynamic analysis operates on working application. And, but still, uh, all those optimized tools uh, have no knowledge about the context, of, about the semantics of the application. Uh, so, manual security testing, like penetration testing, and manual audit uh, of, uh, of applications by, uh, by human experts are still required. And in fact, uh, all the techniques listed here are considered to be complementary, so we cannot use just one of them and uh, forget about the other. They test different, uh, uh, your application from different uh, vectors of attacks. Uh, 
Automized tools are doing as good as they can, but uh, let's now concentrate on how we can we help uh, to do the manual audit of the web application. But here's the problem. When you're given a, a big web application, it's hard to see what, uh, what all parts of it are doing and uh, how, and how the application functions. So, we need a comprehensive interface model of web application to see how it functions and, all, and what each web controller is doing in terms of web application security. And project documentation should be a source for that, but uh, it is often, or I should say usually, uh, out of date or missing in the real world. And modern applications are too big to build such type of model manually, so we need some tool to build what I call a web application model that that's described this interface of how the application functions. So why, why ontologies are a good choice for that? Uh, there are multiple reasons. So, uh, first of all, they have a uh, rich format, I'm talking about OWL format, that uh, allows us to describe the model and all the relations uh, in the application. They can be linked with uh, other ontologies if, if your system is using them, like domain ontology. Uh, you also get visualization of data graph for free because uh, there exists some tool, uh, currently some free tools exist that do validation of ontology data graph. Uh, also you can define constraints for, valid for validating web applications. I'll talk about this later in this presentation. And last but not least, we have some open source frameworks that simplify the implementation of this model building, like OWL API or Jira. So here, so here's the top level ontology we're using. Uh, the the main class, the top level class, is web application, which describes the application itself and its attributes. And so we've marked out two types, uh, two high-level types of uh, web controllers that the uh, application can define. It. it is web service that is uh, described by well-known OWS ontology and request handler that uh, describes how a ontology handles uh, plain HTTP requests like GET and POST requests. And uh, I should say that this request handler is uh, the actual types of request handler are uh, platform dependent. So, for instance, for Java EE applications, you have one type of request handlers. For ASP.NET, for instance, you have different types of handlers. Uh, in the next slides, I'll show. I'll we'll look at uh, those uh, those parts. Uh, in detail. So this is uh, OWLS ontology. Uh, it is well known in its uh, W3C recommendation, so I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, there exists uh, a top level uh, a main class series and three types of uh, three parts of it. Uh, service profile uh, presents what the service is doing. Uh, service model uh, describes how, how the service works and what uh, parameters it, 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 it expects. And uh, grounding describes low-level information, uh, like uh, how to access the, the service and uh, URLs it is using and so on. Uh, so, to be the OWS based ontology can be reverse engineered automatically for an existing application by uh, using the WSDL uh, description of, of web services. And the example tool that does that is OWS Editor by, uh, developed by Multi University. So, 
here is uh, other part of, uh, of ontology uh, related to request handlers. And as I said, it's platform dependent, and uh, currently we're, uh, we're concentrating on Java applications. So this is, this is the web application model based ontology for Java. So there exists one uh, uh, top-level uh, class web application, as I, as I said before, and it may contain one or more request handlers. And examples of such handlers for Java application are servlets, Web, uh, web filters, web application listeners, and so on. There may be more in the future. And request handler, may, uh, request handler defines uh, a method. And this method is, is, is not just a regular uh, program, programming language method, but uh, not, not every programming language method, but a method that is actually handling uh, web requests, like um, for instance, methods handling get or post requests for filters, methods that intercept requests for filters, and so on. And for every method, we extract uh, operations that it is performing directly or indirectly, and uh, we extract this from application source code. And this, this, this. These are not all of the operation uh, are done, of course, but only those ones that are important from the standpoint of security. Uh, the examples include uh, reading HTTP request parameters, adding cookies, uh, validating sessions, and so on. Doing, uh, if, if those operations are done concurrently, this may cause uh, uh, important vulnerabilities in the, in the web application that will cause you to be hacked. So, as I said, this model is too big to, for real applications to be built automatically, so we're developing an open source tool to populate it, uh, so, sorry, to do it manually, so we're developing an open source tool to do this automatically, it's called Infrog. And it operates on uh, applications by code. Uh, so all it needs uh, is the, path, uh, the class path to, uh, to web application. It's reference libraries to be passed. As I said, only Java is now supported. And currently, from uh, Java EE platform entities, uh, support request handlers are uh, serialized filters and listeners. Uh, in the future, uh, Java server pages and RESTful services may be supported. And also, uh, in fact, most modern applications use uh, various web frameworks uh, like Spring or Struts for Java, for instance. So we need to handle that too in order to, to build the comprehensive model. So this is this is the algorithm that uh, web application model builder is uh, is working on. Uh, so first first we discover and parse the web application descriptor and extract all the request handlers like uh, serialized filters and listeners from it and the reference to their implementation. Then for every handler we extract. Uh, we see what, what, what methods uh, is, are, are performed, for instance, what types of HTTP requests uh, the serial is handling, like you know, get a post or head or trace. And for every method, we walk through all the call graph of the application starting from uh, this method and uh, build, building the call graph and extracting all the web operations that are interesting for us. Like, uh, as I said, like uh, cookies, uh, cookies related operations or uh, request related operations. So, and this is done using uh, open source library Apache Commons PCI. Uh, this is uh, just analysis of bytecode of the application. Here is a simple example of uh, the result ontology that is built automatically using this tool. So, we've extracted uh, a uh, web application 
that contains the uh, servlet and uh, it's with the name admin servlet but that does uh, the get operation so it handles get request and in somewhere inside this method maybe uh, in the method body itself or in some referenced uh, code it is performing four operations that are uh, interesting for us in terms of security, uh, three are reading uh, some parameters from uh, from request, and one is setting content type for the response. Uh, and uh, individuals for all of that are or added to the ontology. And I should note that uh, individual data properties aren't shown here, but uh, for instance, all the operation individuals contain information about. Um, about the exact exact place uh, where it is uh, done on the code and uh, parameters that are passed. Uh, so you can also define some constraints in the web application model based ontology to do some simple validation of resulting uh, populated ontologies. Examples of those tools, uh, examples of those constraints are uh, that applications should validate web session at least somewhere once. So during the lookout, for instance, so somewhere in the graph there should exist uh, one individual of session validation operation uh, class, for instance. And uh, another example that cookies should be set with secure and there should be only flags for, for security. Um, however, so, so even though uh, if the resulting uh, ontology doesn't perform these rules, the validation will fail and you will have some indication that application is doing something wrong. Uh, however, if you think about it, uh, at least the first constraint won't work because uh, uh, OWL uses uh, open world assumptions, so we can't really uh, prove that there are no session and validation operations uh, because uh, there may exist some that we don't know about so it makes sense, probably it makes sense for to use closed world assumption for validating the web application model and likely it's supported by some uh, uh, reasoners such as Philip. Yeah, so here's the conclusion uh, we've built a, uh, an open source tool, Yepiform, currently it's only a prototype, uh, but it is, uh, it is already able to build web application model ontology that has automatically from existing application, that has some information about the application itself, the request handlers like servlets and filters and so on that uh, application provides. What method is your request handler uh, handles, like uh, serverless is handling get or post request, and security related operations that are directly or indirectly uh, invoked in the request handler method. And we're also using some, uh, some constraints uh, defined in base ontology where we're able to validate the resulting application. So, so the resulting model isn't only uh, uh, a source of uh, visualization of a web application to, for, for a person who is looking at it to see how it functions, but also a, uh, a way to do some simple validation and say that something is wrong and it's on, on early stage. That's it. Thanks for listening. Questions, please? As the next speaker gets ready, we have time for one question from the audience. You don't have to be shy. It's okay. <laughs> no? So where is the next speaker? Wait, so I have one question. I'm now having my W3C head. Um, I heard OWL. Is there something missing in the specifications that you need? No. No, there's. I don't think there's something missing, but we're building the actual ontology based on, uh, based on OWL and using OWL language. Yeah.